Good morning, viewers. It's definitely a wonderful morning, and we give God thanks for that. God has been so good to all of us. So I want to welcome all of us who are viewing this morning. Welcome those from Spanish Town Tabernacle. Welcome those from Greater Portmore Tabernacle. I want to welcome those from Kingston Tabernacle, Maypen Outreach, and just welcoming everybody from the Maypen across uh, Jamaica. And also I welcome that Tabernacle in the United States if somebody there may be watching with us. So for this week, we've been on the theme, Love Conquers All. And I'm sure you know, been reminded and some of us have been informed of, you know, the various types of love that are there. Um, for example, the familial love, that's a love that exists between a mother and her child. Uh, we know about the eros love, that's the, the sensual and romantic love, the love that exists between a husband and a wife. And we have made familiar with filia love, that's the love that exists between fellow Christians and the one that tops the list you know that one is agape love that is the love that God has for for the world humanity no, but for our time together I want us to um, at the love of God just briefly and our response to it that's the outline of this morning's presentation the love of God and our response to it uh, now, God's love is, is massive. We, we know that. We, we can't wrap our minds around it. It's, it's huge. Um, no amount of words can describe the magnitude of, of God's love. But before we, we go into it, I want us to look to this loving God in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your love towards us. Our hearts are overwhelmed by the fact that you love us, Lord God. You look deep within and you know who we are by nature. And at the same time, you love us, Lord God, with an everlasting love. And Father, I just thank you this morning for the opportunity and I pray that our time together will be one of great encouragement and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen all right so um, the whole line again is that we'll be looking at love of God just briefly and to it so the first thing I want to mention about the love of God or God's love is that it is unconditional God's love is unconditional we know about that from John 3 16 one of the most known Bible verses it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life so this love that God has for the world speaks about his love um, for General, the people of the world in general and this love is not motivated by anything about us uh, God was not moved to love us because of any specific or particular qualities that he saw in us um, God was just throwing out love to undeserving sinners like you and me whose hearts are bent on turning away from him um, bent on rebelling against him we despised his character despised his holiness and at the same time God was throwing out his love towards us we do not meet the conditions for for such a love but he loves us anyway and as a matter of fact there is nothing that you and I could possibly do to cause God to love us more or love us any less than and he does he loves us with an everlasting love in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 it says but God 
demonstrates his own love towards us in this while we were still sinners Christ died for us so it's not why we were righteous or quote unquote good it was when we were ungodly that Christ died for us uh, unconditional love is as we would know unchanging love so there's nothing that we could do to qualify for this love and this love that God the directs towards us is an unchanging love so it's unlike the love that I would have for my wife like for one moment I, my love is hot for her right and then another, another moment I wonder what's going on in in my heart it's not like our human love that wavers from from time to time no God's love is is steady God's love remains remains constant and I want us to just take great comfort and encouragement in, in that fact to know that the moment you and I woke up as believers, the moment that we awoke from slumber, God's love was fully and complete direct fully and completely directed before we did anything spiritual like pray or said thank God or anything like that. God's love was fully and complete right there being directed towards us. So we should be encouraged to we are not living out this life. We are not serving him to earn more of his love. And if we don't uh, do what we ought to do, God loves us any less. No, but there's a steady love that is flowing out towards us and it will not change so God's love is unconditional and his unconditional love is an unchanging love the next thing I want to say about God's love is God's love flows from from who he is so we note in 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 it says but who does not love does not know God for God is his love. So out of the fullness, out of the fullness of who he is, he loves. And God's action of loving comes from his attribute of being loving. So his, his loving acts that he carries out comes from his attribute of being a loving God. He loves because he is love. He loves because it is his name to love the stream of his love that flows out to people flows out to you and me originates from him uh, he's so full of love that he had to let it out and this is important because love is so bound up into who God is that he does nothing that contradicts himself I want us to know that love is so bound up into who God is that he does nothing that contradicts his nature contradicts himself. So you think he said, but come on, I know that God has done some some serious things like execute people and carried out punishment on people and that don't seem pretty loving to me. God's attributes of being just and being just don't conflict with his attribute of being loved so everything that God does every act that he carries out regardless of how we perceive it is a loving act and we shall also take great encouragement in this that nothing that God allows us to go through in our life nothing that our loving father allows us to go through this life is him acting in an unloving way we can just dismiss that thought if it comes to our mind when we are going through some difficult time I wonder does God love me? We can bank on the fact that God carries out everything that he does from his nature. That is love. Regardless of how we, we, we view the situation. It is just a, a loving thing that God is doing. We may not be able to perceive how, but we can bank on the fact that he is demonstrating his love in this particularly painful and difficult time. In our life and um, the next thing is about God's love is that God's love is inseparable I know 
a, a Bible verse just came to somebody's mind. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Paul writes, For I am persuaded, and here he goes to about the extremes, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He could have just said plainly, there is nothing that will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus and leave it there. But he wants to make the point abundantly clear. Absolutely nothing in all of creation. Absolutely nothing. Everything is ruled out. Absolutely nothing in all of the created world will be able to separate a believer from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Death nor life can't separate us from the love of God. It's, it's not like when the pastor said, <laughs> pastor said the, at that moment, you know, till death do you guys part, till death do you part. Death nor life can't separate us from that love. Angels nor principalities can't separate us from that love. Things present that we're going through and things in the future can't separate us from that love. This love that God has for us will never let us go. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> it will hold on to us and never leave us. God's love is, is inseparable. Next thing I want to mention about God's love is, is that it's sacrificial. Um, John chapter 15 verse 13 where Jesus was talking to his followers he says greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends no we cannot talk about love we're talking about sacrifice because sacrifice is bound up in love sacrifice comes out of true love so if you <laughs> if you love your wife and i and if you love your husband and if you love someone you will find that you will sacrifice you will find that you will give up something. So the love of God is a sacrificial, selfless love. And Jesus here tells his disciples that there is no greater love than, than this love. The, the fullest expression, the fullest and strongest expression that, uh, that love can have is that it gives, that it's sacrifice. That's the climax of love. And he demonstrates this kind of high love by giving himself for his followers and he gave himself for us the, the peak expression of god's love towards us was a love of sacrifice um next thing i want to note about i want us to note about god's love is that god's love is beyond comprehension this is the last one about god's love god's love is beyond comprehension now in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 3, 17 to 19, these are Paul's words. And I want us to just um, note how he, what he says. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts but through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp. Hear it now. Grasp how wide and long and high and deep the dimensions of, of God's love um, is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge and highlight that to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of, of God. Clearly, we, Paul is praying for the believers that they will be spiritually enabled to understand the, the, the depth and the height and the, the fullness of God's love towards them. He's praying because he knows that in and of themselves, they can't comprehend God's love. In and on their own, they uh, can't fathom God's love for them. So Paul is, is praying that God will help them, God will enable them to just grasp some more of his love towards them um he knows that god alone can make a saint know how much god loves them hence the the prayer 
Because love is beyond comprehension. We will not be able to to fully understand God's love for us as believers. We can't fully understand it in and of our own strength. Nor will we be able to understand the fullness of His love in this time, in this life. <laughs> if we could, if we could understand God's love, it will drive us crazy. Probably we never thought about that before. If we, in our, in our flesh, in our humanity, yes, we empowered by the Holy Spirit. If if God was, if God made it able for us to understand His love to a deep, deep level, it would drive us insane. So here, Paul prays for the believers. In verse nineteen, he ends by saying that they cannot understand the love of God fully in this life. He says. And to know this love, and to know that surpasses knowledge. To know this love that is beyond knowledge. So Paul is, as I said before, he's telling the believers point about that that they will never be able to fully comprehend God's love. But the thing about it is that we as saints of God can grow in our knowledge. That as the years go by and as we continue to know more about, about Christ through the scriptures and we, we love him more because we know him more, we will come to appreciate and be stunned by that love. Will compel it, but it will compel us even more. We'll, cont we'll continue to ask the question, why why do you love me so much so deep and so wide and so high is your love for me why do you love me so much and so one of the things that we can do as believers as regards um god's love for us is is to pray for our own self that we will be able to just grasp a little bit more to understand to a, a greater degree god's love for us and a lot of the, the, the things that we may be struggling with, probably self-esteem, like nobody no love with, or something of the sort, a lot of those uh, emotional issues can be dealt with by getting a, a greater sense of God's love for us. So the remedy, the antidote for some of those emotional issues is, is God's love for us. And I pray that we will just continue to push in in scripture continue to pray and as we 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 grow in the lord we'll grow in our love for him and you know we will just be enthralled and captivated by god so we love the lord more now than we did five years ago because we know him more commitment our pursuit to find out more about him within those five years so Let's continue to, to push and know God and know the Lord. So, just to share you something practical. So, when you just got, got married, right? You love your wife, you love your husband. You knew, yeah, that life had qualities about her that you loved and you, you just got married because you saw her as the one, right? And during those years of marriage, you you found out more about that that person your wife and you love her more <laughs> no if it's 10 years of marriage five years of marriage one year of marriage you love her more no because you know more about her so one of the ways we can as i said before one of the ways we can grow in our love for god is knowing more about him as we see more of his attributes as we see more of his qualities as we see more of you know his person our love for him will be drawn out by what we are seeing in him. So we can't love him more without knowing our Bibles, in other words, uh, knowing about his attributes in the scriptures. So that's a, just a short thing about God's love for us. Now on to our response to God's love. So what response, what effect that God's love should have on us and What's on the top of the list, of course, is to love him back, right? 
to love him back. First John chapter 4 verse 19 says, We love because he first loved us. Is a reflexive love. It's a reciprocating love. It's a love that we return because of the love that was shown to us. God initiates the love and we reciprocate love. And that's what we do. We return the love that we have received. And this love is itself in our surrender to Him. So, as Paul would put it in Romans 12, in light of God's mercy and love and grace that was demonstrated to you, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. In light of the love that was shown to you, your response is to love him back by surrendering your, your life to him. Every aspect of your life, every, every part of your life surrendered to him in response to the love and mercy that he, was, that he has shown to you. We love the Lord. And we want to serve him wholeheartedly because of the love that was demonstrated to us. So our response to the love is to love him back and to surrender to him. There is no more reasonable act that we can do in light of the love that was shown to him. And the next response is to love others. No, all throughout the Bible. We are instructed to, to love people, whether it be uh, friends, family, you know, enemies. So here it is. There's a call to love that runs throughout the Bible. The incredible, relentless, and complete love of God that was shown to us is supposed to spread through us. I want to the complete, relentless love of God that was shown to us is supposed to spread through us. God didn't in so just awesome love towards us and we keep it bottled in and just direct it towards him no he wants it to go in a horizontal direction and love people so we are told to love our neighbors as we love ourselves our neighbor of course is anybody that um, is around us is not those who live beside us and therefore we should love others the same way we love our ourselves and we are also told to love fellow believers Jesus told his followers that they should love each other as he loved them. So the way I've loved you, to the degree that I've loved you, you ought to love fellow Christians. We ought to love fellow Christians in the same way Christ has loved us. No, that degree of love is unconditional love. And we cannot love each other to the degree that God expects us to love each other unless the Holy Spirit works in our heart and moves moves us all believers all followers of christ are marked by a deep sins and sincere affection for other brothers and sisters in in christ they will know us by by our love now on top of that command we are told to love our our enemies now this is this is not natural Love your enemies. Love those who persecute you. Love those who want to see you downfall and when you stumble them happy and delight in your downfall. Love those who despise you. The easiest thing for us to do is to have off people who have wronged us. You know? That's so easy. You not like me? I want to have you off. I don't want to in my space. I don't want the negative energy around me. God is saying, Christ is saying, love those who don't love you. Love your enemies, those who don't wish well of you. And we cannot do this apart from, from God's strength. We need God's help in loving people. We need God's help in loving people. And we need God's help in, in loving Him. And we need God's help in knowing what the kind of love or the degree of love that he has for us so so in bottom line we need god's help in loving whether it be loving our enemies whether it be loving our our spokes whether it be loving um people whether it be loving god whether it be comprehending god's love for us we need god's help in all 
we desperately need God's Spirit to to just give us the strength to do love like that. I love the way we we are to love. And the the next response, the final response that I have um, concerning our response to, to God's love is. God's love will cause us to have confidence on the day of judgment. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. And just read it. And so we know and rely on the love of God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. He, this is how we, I'm sorry, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Why? Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So here's the sense. As believers, we have nothing to fear about when we appear on judgment day. It will not be punishment that we will receive. We should not have that fear in our hearts. Like we, are, we fear being punished by God. No. John here, the apostle of love, is saying no. God's perfect love drives out that kind of fear. It's not talking about fear of anything or any phobia. <laughs> fear of cockroach or fear of lizard or anything like that. God's love does, does not drive out phobia of that kind of fear. God's Love drives out the fear in terms of, in regarding punishment. The perfect love of God drives out all fear. And if we fear in that regard, we are not made perfect in love. So God's wish for us is that we, may, that we be made perfect in love. That we have a rock solid confidence that on the day of judgment, it will not be punishment. It will not be punitive, but it will be reward day. It will be a moment of just issuing rewards of course it will be a terrifying time but it will be a delightful time that judgment day so we don't have anything to fear in terms of being that we'll be punished but that will be rewarded so god's love drives out that fear and replaces it with faith god's love drives out that 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 fear and conquers it the love of god conquers all fear in our hearts as it concerns Punishment on the day of, of judgment, but we'll have confidence on on that day. So as I wrap up, I, I, I just want to to say that we we have been immensely, unimaginably, incredibly loved by God. And it's a love that we need to continue to pursue. We will never come to the end of the, the road where we understand it fully and look back and say, Oh, I see just how much He loves us. Not even in heaven we'll be able to pursue or, or understand to the greatest degree God's love for us. We will continue to pursue the glories of, of His love even in, in heaven. We'll not get bored in heaven. We'll constantly just wake up in amazement. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. This love is so deep, so wide, so high. And we just can't wrap our minds about it. Not even our re refined, sanctified, um, perfect minds will be able to wrap our own infinite, per the perfect love of, of God. So um, I just want to close um, in in. in prayer right now father i i pray and thank you for all those who are viewing believers and unbelievers lord god for the believers i pray that they will be able to grasp we will be able to grasp a bit more of your love for us lord jesus that as the days progress and as we know more about you in your word that we will be more stunned more enthralled, more captivated by your love towards us that will constrain us, Lord, that will cause us to serve you. And Father, I pray that for those in our life who may be giving us a hard time, for those who we may consider to be our enemies, that you will help us to love them that you will help us to show them compassion 
we know that they don't deserve it but it's not because they deserve it while we're doing it lord but because of your love towards us that causes us to show them love that they don't don't deserve so help us in that era of our life help us to love our family to the degree that you want us to love help husbands to love their wives help wives to love their husbands help fathers to love their children help children to love their parents help us all to love people more to a greater degree lord god and we just desperately depend on your holy spirit to enable us to do this lord jesus because we can't do it in and of our own strength so may by your grace you supply this well needed strength in your precious son's name i pray amen amen so i want to thank you thank you all for for joining in this morning um, join us tomorrow um, for service at the Greater Pomore Tabernacle at 8 o'clock and at Greater Pomore you join us at 11 o'clock for, for service. I pray that we have a good rest of the day and, and may we be drawn more and understand a bit more about God's love today. Have a good day. Blessings.